With all of these LLMs becoming increasingly more powerful, I've been getting more and more concerned that my channel may just become obsolete. You see, on this channel, a large part of what I do is making tutorials on how to code the various visual effects I find around the web. But if the LLMs can just do it all for you, then perhaps my services are no longer required. In an effort to help determine if these concerns were valid, I decided I needed to run some tests. Using some of the effects from my old videos as reference, I want to see how close I can get to recreating them purely by prompting these different models. The rules of these tests are simple. Each model will receive precisely one prompt. No follow-up prompts are allowed. All models must receive the exact same prompt. And finally, no modifications can be made to the output. The code returned from each model, along with the resulting visuals, will be rendered out exactly as is. Now, in theory, I could just manually prompt each model one at a time, but why would I spend 20 minutes doing that when I could spend a few weeks building a site to do it for me? Since one shot was already taken, I decided to call it Uno Shot. I had to double check with Gemini that I wasn't culturally appropriating, and it basically said, as long as I don't use a sombrero in the logo, I'm good. The way it works is I input a prompt into a text box and select which models I want to include. When I hit submit, it sends a request to my API. From there, I loop over the included model IDs, sending one request each to OpenRouter. They cost more than using the model providers directly, but in return give the convenience of accessing all of them from one place. The responses from each model are then stored in my database as JSON objects so that later they can be retrieved and displayed to the user. I used an iframe to display these visual outputs because you should never just blindly trust unreviewed code. And this way, the LLM's code stays isolated from the rest of my site. All right, now I think we're ready to get to the challenge. There will be four effects in total. We'll start with the easiest one and gradually get more complex. Each model will be graded on a scale from one to 10 based on how well they recreate each effect. The model with the most points at the end will be declared the winner. Effect number one is the image echo effect I found in a Ludwig video. It would take forever to read through all my prompts, so if you want to see them for yourself, you can do so directly on the site. This particular effect is a relatively straightforward animated loop, so I would hope to see tens across the board, but let's find out. First up, we have Opus 4.5, easy 10, not really much to say here. Next is Gemini 3, also a 10, GPT 5.2, 10, and finally we have Grok. Ooh, uh, almost. Looks like it got the hard part right, but missed the centering pretty horribly, so I'm gonna go with a seven. Okay, a uh, strong start for almost everyone. And with that, we have a three-way tie for first. Next up is the glowing border effect from Linear. Here we have a two by three grid of cards with a faint glow that follows your mouse, as well as an additional glow confined to the border that actually extends beyond the currently hovered card to the ones nearby. Not overly difficult, but a little bit of trickiness involved. So let's see how Opus did. Hmm, the glow is pretty small and faint, so it's a little hard to tell if it's doing what it's supposed to, but I can see a border glow just barely, so I'm gonna go with a seven. Next up, we have Gemini. Definitely an improvement over Opus with the glow extending much further. I like the smaller gap between the cards. Honestly, the overall design sense feels stronger here, so I'm gonna give it a nine. GPT is next. Eh, not bad. It appears to be behaving correctly, but there's a little bit of weirdness with the border. So I'm gonna give this one an eight. Last but not least, uh, maybe that's bad phrasing. Last up, we have Grok. Well, it did try to do something. Uh, I did explicitly state that the outer glow should only be peeking through the border. I'm gonna have to give this one a four. All right, with round two complete, we have Gemini in the lead with 19 points. Opus and GPT trailing closely behind, and then there's Grok, who, I mean, come on, man. Like, I, I really do want to see you do well here. Effect number three, the magic mouse trailer effect from Canva, one of my personal favorite effects that I've made a video on. We have a soft pink glow that follows the mouse, along with a series of stars that randomly appear near the mouse's position, and then quickly animate downward out of view. Once again, we'll start with Opus. Okay, the star animations look nice. I'd say the thing I take issue with the most is these clearly defined circles within the glow. Not exactly what I was looking for. Overall, I'd have to give it an eight out
out of 10. Moving on to Gemini, I mean, hard to beat that. Feels extremely smooth, nice animation on the stars. Gotta be a nine out of 10. Next we have GPT. Okay, all the components are there, but it can get very laggy. Once again, we have the clearly defined circles in the glow trail. I give this a seven out of 10. And finally, we have Grok. Come on, little buddy, I'm rooting for ya. Ugh. Well, let's start with the positives, I suppose. The star animation looks nice. You even went extracurricular with them and made them stick around after your mouse leaves the page. But obviously we are missing the glow here. Five out of 10. Okay, round three results are in, and we have Gemini beginning to pull away, Opus and GPT are neck and neck, and old Grocky is just out here doing the best he can. The final effect is another personal favorite, the glitchy text hover effect from Evervault.com. You essentially have a randomized alphanumeric string that gets swapped out on every mouse move event, along with a radial gradient blended on top, which moves around with the mouse. I did find this one a bit tricky to prompt, but let's see how Opus did. Huh, I was hoping to have the borders extend directly outward past the card, for the plus icons to be exactly in the corners, and the text to be confined to the inner card, but I honestly feel like those may have just been prompting issues. Overall, I think it did very well from one prompt, so I'll go with an 8 out of 10. Next up is Gemini. Interesting interpretation on the borders. Somehow managed to confine the text to the inner card how I wanted. I mean, maybe I'd make a couple minor changes, but overall I'd give this a 9 out of 10. Let's see how GPT did next. Huh, it's the first one to not properly blend the gradient into the text. Adding the translucent white to the cards sort of ruins the immersion of the effect. I'd have to give this a 6 out of 10. Excited to see what Grok is up to? Oh boy. Well, I guess I didn't explicitly state that the text string should wrap. Same issue here with the gradient not masking. Would probably have to give this one a 3. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how the models did. Their ability to recreate some of these effects off of one prompt may just put me out of business after all. As a longtime developer, would I say I'm completely ready to hand over the reins? No. Personally, I could never 100% vibe code a site in the colloquial sense. I just wouldn't be comfortable saying, here you go, users. I hope it's secure. Hope it doesn't break suddenly or leak all of your information. No, I'd much rather have a complete grasp on what my code is doing. That being said, I do use some of these models extensively in Cursor, but I always break each request down into manageable steps, where I know exactly what's happening and can approve every line of code myself. A little disclaimer before the grand reveal here, I used Grok's Code Fast model for this video, because I assumed it would be the best for coding-related tasks, but later went back and tried the version 4 model to find it performed a lot better. That being said, it was significantly more expensive and took an extremely long time to finish its responses. With that, we have Grok in fourth place with 19 points, GPT 5.2 came in third with 31 points, Opus 4.5 in second with 33, and finally our winner was Gemini with 37 out of 40 possible points. As impressed as I am by how good these models are getting, I feel incredibly fortunate that I already have a long history with programming. Being able to guide these LLMs so precisely and fully understand what they're doing feels like a superpower. Look, I'm gonna be honest, there's no easy path to get here. You have to put in the time and the effort. But if you're going to learn, you need to make sure you're getting your information from a high quality source. And I don't care what high quality source you use, but if you're looking for a recommendation, you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Front End Masters. They put a lot of effort into making sure their instructors and courses are all top notch. You can learn the full stack, front end and back end, from people who literally work at Microsoft and Netflix. If you sign up using my link in the description, you will be directly supporting this channel and leveling up your skills. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.